Welcome parents and guardians and students who are their own guardians to this presentation for Smart Restart Issues for Special Education. I'm Patty Cummings, Special Education Director for Fargo Public Schools. And later on in this presentation, you will be hearing from Justin Lean, our new Assistant Director of Special Education for Fargo Public Schools. The objective of this presentation is to be able to share with you our current thought processes for students who receive special education and how that will work in this time of COVID. We would like to receive feedback from you in the form of a survey. That feedback will be used in a special education leadership team planning meeting that will take place on August 4th. I wanna let you know that this is the first of many collaborative processes and we are going to be extending um, looking at other methods of face-to-face uh, -face or real-time via Zoom interactions um, to also receive some continued feedback from you as a group. So this is our starting point. Today's agenda includes the following topic areas. First, we'll discuss North Dakota Smart Restart model. We'll then jump into the Fargo Public Schools guiding principles for reopening our schools which will really hone into the area of special education. We'll then be joined with more information on the instructional levels offered during COVID. Lastly, we'll talk about timeline and next steps as we continue to collaborate and receive input and feedback from our parents, guardians, and students. In considering reopening our schools, Fargo Public Schools guides all practices and all leveled instruction alongside North Dakota Smart Restart Odometer as introduced by Governor Burgum. This will continue to be a way of communicating what level of instruction will be provided, not only to our students with disabilities and IEP, but for all students across Fargo Public Schools. If you look at the leveled system here uh, provided on the slide, you'll see that there are five different levels, including a section at the bottom, which is our virtual academy. Further in the presentation, Dr. Cummings is gonna go through each of those scenarios and give you a better idea of what that will look like and how that aligns to our students with IEPs. Again, in all considerations, we want to ensure that we're, safety is priority and secondarily that we're ensuring that we're meeting FAPE or the free appropriate public education for each student with a disability. This slide may look familiar as it is consistently conveyed through Fargo Public Schools Superintendent Dr. Gandhi. In past press conferences and communications, we utilize these four components in all decision making, past and future, as we think about what instruction looks like for students across Fargo Public Schools during the COVID-19 pandemic. As we're preparing for the future, we want you to again reflect upon these four principles as we want to be clear that we're always thinking and reflecting upon these as we make any and all decisions across Fargo Public Schools. Principle number one is ensuring the safety and well-being of all students and employees. That remains our paramount charge, um, not only at Fargo Public Schools, but as Governor Burgum has shared across all schools in North Dakota. But specific to Fargo Public Schools, we're looking at the safety and well-being of all students and employees in school buildings, as well as our central office employees. Secondly is promoting equity and accessibility to the learning of all students. We know that this can be difficult, especially when we're embarking on different instructional levels. And so we have to continually reflect and rely upon research and input from our families, from students with IEPs themselves, staff members, to ensure that we are promoting that equity and accessibility, which does present challenges but know that we do always utilize this principle as a way of leveling the playing field for our students with special needs as well. Third is providing instructional delivery systems to meet the needs of all students. On the previous slides, you saw the, the level five systems as well as the virtual academy. Again, Dr. Cummings will go into greater detail as we embark through this presentation. Lastly, we know that as we 
integrate different instructional models that some of the relationships and the interactions that our students, whether in general education or those with IEPs um, in full classrooms, uh, we, we know that this becomes a challenge. So what can we do differently to really entice and promote these positive relationships and interactions? So this really goes into our communications, not only with staff members, but how can we provide access so those students can interact with their, their friends, the other students that are in their classroom, which we know is are very important as well. Again, these four criteria are reflected upon across all central office employees as we're making decisions moving forward. A free and appropriate public education is an important foundation in special education. And during the time of COVID and distance learning, it is no different. FAPE ensures access to education for students with disabilities. During our normal, typical routines in school, we use the Individual Education Program, or IEP, to define what services look like for students with disabilities. During distance learning, uh, due to COVID, we created what was called the Individualized Contingency Plan, or ICP. The IEP is the foundation of services for students with disabilities. It explains their present level of performance, goes into goals and objectives, accommodations, modifications, and services. The ICP is really just an overlay for that IEP, in which time says that during distance learning, these parts of the IEP may be changed. Our annual IEP meetings will be held virtually this school year to minimize the influx of adult physical interactions that could potentially cause a threat to our student and staff population due to COVID. We of course will make considerations in circumstances where a distance meeting is not feasible for the parent. It is very possible that we may be using buildings other than the school building to hold these meetings. As the levels or phases of the risk level becomes more flexible, then in-person meetings will be further analyzed. ICP discussions will be included in all annual IEP meeting discussions starting this school year. When we're looking at free and appropriate public education as it applies to the specialized instruction that students receive, as always, um, we create that individual education plan. We need to develop those specific goals and we have to have time to implement. And there are times that we find out um, that the implementation isn't working the way we felt. And so we may come back to the table and make revisions. And the IEP could require some simple modifications, addition or editing or deletion of goals to align with the instructional model. Or perhaps we need to look at changing some of the accommodations or modifications. So there is a continual cycle of, of implementation of the IEP, progress monitoring the, the student, and then making revisions as needed. It's no doubt going to be a little bit more complex um, as we're doing some of our learning virtually, uh, but Fargo Public Schools is dedicated to, to figuring out how we can do some authentic progress monitoring of our special education students. On this slide, we will continue our discussion around FAPE and as it relates to special education guiding principles. An additional area that we must reflect upon is the related services and what that delivery model looks like. As we're often trying to prime and communicate to all of our families, things are going to look different. They're going to look different in our schools. They're going to look different in terms of the platforms or the methods that we um, are instructing our students. And related services is additionally one of those areas that may and will likely look a lot different next school year. As we're preparing for safety of our students and our staff members, we're trying to minimize the amount of physical interactions and transitions that are coming in and out of each classroom. So in terms of ensuring that these services are continuing to be implemented per FAPE, we're gonna look at a couple different strategies to, to achieve this. One of those is likely embarking on teletherapy model for our related service providers. This would be provided through Zoom, which is an online video platform. And instead of that provider going into the classroom, 
they will be on video alongside of the student. And if that classroom has a paraprofessional, they will likely sit next to or be socially distanced in a way that they can also gather those unique skills and help incorporate that into the classroom. Again, this minimizes the amount of traffic of having related service providers come into the classroom, as well as those related service providers pulling those students out and those students interacting with numerous other students, especially in a collaborative um, model. Additionally, the related service providers are gonna to have to enhance their consultation with the paraeducators or paraprofessionals and those teachers. So when we get into talking about the revision of IEPs, some of our related service providers may be adding more consultation hours. So if they're not getting into the classroom as much, they may need to provide more consultation with the paraprofessional uh, staff, the general education teacher, and the special education teacher. So those are some changes that we could see in terms of related services. Ideal is obviously having that provider face-to-face -face and in room, but given the health and safety standards for our students, we have to think of these alternatives to ensure that we are meeting the needs of our students as listed on their IEP. Some other areas that we need to look at is providing access to general education, including specials. So for students that have a percentage of general education time or maybe special education pullout, we have to adapt and look at different schedules and different ways that we're gonna incorporate specials, we're gonna incorporate maybe math pullouts or um, the opportunity for the general education teacher to um, incorporate themselves into a special education resource room versus that student always going into the general education classroom. All of those decisions will obviously be discussed in the upcoming IEP meetings and as we look at those individualized contingency plans. But these are some expectations of some changes in terms of the way that we're providing services. Let's dive into safety. Throughout the next few slides, you're gonna see many of the safety measures that have been implemented, suggested, and guided for the upcoming school year as we embark on the different instructional levels, whether a hybrid level in in-person model with restrictions, and then distance learning with some students on site as well. So in reflecting upon this, there are some general characteristics and components that align to all students, but then there are some that we really wanna hone in, especially for our students with disabilities. The first of those is the hand hygiene procedures. Um, washing and sanitizing hands throughout the day can be difficult for some of our students with disabilities without the reminder to continue to wash hands. Throughout our schools, you will see many visual models. In addition to many of our teachers are going to, again, have to teach these procedures, whether embedding these into morning meetings, into discussions um, throughout the day, several reminders, or even building up those individualized step-by-step -step task analyses, which really guide a student step-by-step -step through the many components. Social distancing is a second reflection point for us. We know that this can be difficult, but at all times we want to attempt to practice social distancing. Again, for some of our students that may lack the social cues and the proximity um, gaps in between our staff and students. This may, will be something that we continue to highlight, to enhance and to instruct upon, to ensure the safety of all of our students and staff members. As Dr. Gandhi has shared in many of the communications that you've seen, whether coming from transportation or to come out, um, or you're hearing from building loving level principles, we want to encourage anyone who is sick to stay home. This goes not only for our school staff members, but for our students as well. We're asking for your collaboration in advance to ensure that the safety of all students of our public schools and that of our staff members um, 
can stay healthy. So we, we don't want to take any chances. And so if you have a child that isn't feeling well, definitely displaying any symptoms that align with COVID doesn't mean that the student has them, but if they have a fever or a cold, let's, let's work together to ensure the safety of everyone at all times. Another criteria level that we're looking at is placing students in similar groupings. So again, we want to mis minimize the exposure to too many students, too many additional staff members. So looking at ways that we can keep similar groups of students together for longer periods of time to minimize the possibility of exposure. Again, this will be something that we continue to look upon. We will require um, some input from you as a parent as we move forward. It's not a, this is not something that's simple and um, easy to do. So a lot of planning and reflection will go into this. Another item that we're looking at in the upcoming school year is ensuring that students face the same direction. So this is really looking at seating charts and looking at the dynamics of each room. As you know, our students do work very differently. Um, they respond very differently. Um, and so the classroom setup of not only um, our students with disabilities in their classrooms, but all classrooms may look a little differently in the upcoming school year. So we want to ensure that students are spaced out appropriately. They're not face to face um, with another student or staff member as much as possible. So this will be something that we continue to work on and definitely check in with your building level principals and specifically your special education teachers as we again prepare for their safety. As we're looking at visits in the upcoming school year, we want you to know that we, we do respect and love when we can have other family members come in and check in on our kiddos when they're in the classroom. But for this upcoming school year and with the level of expo exposures and the, the high needs of our students, we're asking that anyone coming to the school be limited to a parent or guardian. Again, we can have numerous meetings, communications over the phone, uh, via Zoom or a video platform, but we're asking for the in-person visits to really cease to just those that are a parent or guardian. If you have questions about this area, feel free to reach out to the special education leadership team, your school building level principal, or to your special education teacher or case manager for further details. Whenever possible, we want to encourage some um, outdoor activities. We know this can be um, rather interesting, especially with the weather in North Dakota, but we do want to take advantage of that great fall weather um, as we're embarking into the, the later part of next school year spring to allow for some opportunities to happen outside where we can practice that social distance and give more room for our students when we're outside. Another measure that we will be educating into our classrooms is limiting the sharing of objects, uh, which are difficult to clean. Um, so we will obviously be educating on keeping our masks to ourselves and um, some of those more difficult or new items that our students will not necessarily be used to. Um, but this will be a measure that whatever objects we're looking at, pens, pencils, that there's going to be uh, an individualized amount to each student. And they'll utilize that, whether um, they're going to color a picture, or they're going to use a computer or device. Everything's going to be specific to them and not, again, sharing with other students. And lastly, but not least, is looking at virtual meetings when feasible. So for our students with IEPs and with disabilities, we're looking at those IEP meetings. We're looking at continuous progress meetings and checking in um, as we modify and revise IEPs. So instead of having these in person, which is the desire of um, all staff members, students and families, um, we're going to ask for your full participation virtually, again, to limit the exposure to 
other staff members and students in our buildings. Again, if you have questions about this, please do not hesitate to reach out to um, the special education leadership team, myself or Dr. Cummings, um, or your school level building principals. Again, the safety and well being of our students and staff are paramount. In the past months, we have been presented a new normal. This is not only specific to Fargo Public Schools, but many schools across North Dakota and nationwide. One of those items is wearing a mask. And when we consider wearing a mask, we really reflect upon what that looks like for our youngest scholars um, in early childhood, as well as many students that have sensory needs and thinking about what a challenge that poses to them. We have to continue to think about their safety as well, and we want to promote the, the use of a mask, but 100% compliance at all times may not be feasible. So we wanted to dive into this a little more and talk about um, the considerations and the flexibility and individualization that we're taking into consideration as we prepare for your child or children to return to a Fargo Public School uh, classroom this fall. Um, every student and staff member is going to be provided a mask. Again, I want everyone to understand that this is a limited supply of masks. Um, and when we think about one type of mask, that will likely not fit the specific needs of each and every student. Um, on the slide, you'll see that we've ask for parents to consider supplying their own mask for individualized needs and preferences. Um, this is not to say that your child won't be provided one, but again, this will be a generalized um, mask that we're providing to all students and staff members. If you have a child that's, you know, extremely uh, hesitant to wear a cotton mask, maybe there is a different fabric style or a different um, sensory field that you have found uh, to be helpful, we ask that you send that so that, again, we can keep you, the health and well-being of your child safe throughout the day. We also have seen that some of our students um, really do well with very individualized masks, such as a SpongeBob or a Backyard Again, um, something so that we can continue to educate and promote the use of a mask in the classroom. Your child will not be penalized or reprimanded if they take off a mask. Um, and we want that to be very clear to every family. We know that 100% 100 com 100 compliance is going to be difficult for different groups of students across Fargo Public Schools. And we understand that. So we'll, we will continue to be working with our staff members, um, our families, and our students as we embark in this new normal. Um, we know that th there are going to be challenges. Additionally, we know that there are unique considerations and exceptions that will need to be made uh, specifically to the medical needs of students and staff. Um, again, those will be individualized conversations. They will um, require a doctor's note. And we continue to look forward to continuous conversation as, again, this new normal is about to proceed uh, into the school system in the upcoming school year. If you have specific questions, reach out to your building level principal, Dr. Cummings or myself, so that we can further guide you in what this will look like specific to your son or daughter or numerous children. Um, some additional teaching measures that are going to have to go into the classroom. So we talked a little bit about the hand washing procedures. We're going to have to talk about what, why we're wearing masks, what the purpose and the safety is for um, to help bring our, bring our students on to the understanding why they have to wear a mask, because again, this is the new normal. Additionally, we're going to add in some of our social stories. So specific to masks, specific to how long I'm washing my hands, why I'm using a, a hand sanitizer consistently, are all going to be these new normals. And for a lot of our students, especially on um, the spectrum, 
uh, students that uh, work or thrive on routines, this is going to be very difficult. And so not just a one time, let's introduce it in a morning meeting at the beginning of the year, but possibly daily, if not um, for a few months, as we build those routines in the new normal of what our safety looks like. Why are we washing our hands? How long am I washing it for? Um, what do I do when I'm leaving the gym and there's a hand sanitizer system there? How often am I using it? Am I using it five times in a row? Am I using it once? So a big charge across the district is specifically to our staff members and our school leadership is norming some communications within our classrooms to prepare our students for success in all these new safety measures. Social stories really promote that kind of step-by-step -step routine, as well as in form of, this is what it looks like now as we embark into the new school year. So we're looking forward to continuing to support our school level teachers, related service providers, and our school building level principals in helping to teach these safety measures as we move into the next school year. As we know, um, the closing of the 2019-2020 school year um, was not ideal. We love to be in person one-on-one -on -one with our students, with our staff members. However, the pandemic posed a challenge for us. And so we had to quickly collaborate and find ways that we were gonna continue to service our students and ensure the safety of not only their academic well-being um, and the implementation of their IEPs, but we also have to think about what challenges this posts to our students and staff members as it relates to their social emotional learning. Continuous conversations are being held now from with outside stakeholders um, as we embark into integrating some more SEL approaches in the classroom and for our staff members. Last but not least, we're looking at training all staff members to understand their roles and responsibility in safety and precautionary measures. Similar to what we're discussing about our students and what the new normal looks like is a continuous conversation with our staff members as well. As school uh, district leadership, as building level leadership, there's a lot of new normal for all of us. So it's not specific just to, to parents, we also see uh, across the board as uh, professionals, there's a lot of new normal and we will take the time to invest in the training as well so that um, we can all move forward by meeting the best needs and the best methods for meeting the needs of all students in Fargo Public Schools. In the previous slide, we discussed more safety related items towards our students with special needs, including individualizing items as well as sending in preferred items for our students as we prepare for their safety in an in-person model. Some of those areas include the face coverings or protective wear, as well as sanitizer and soap. We know for many of our students with sensory processing uh, issues that they require us to think outside of the box. Some have aversions to cloth or to the feeling of something around their ears or numerous different items. So in considering all this, we want to use research to see what, what is happening, not only from the lens of a regional or statewide um, directive, but also from the CDC and looking at research that's going on at Harvard. The research does say that we do need to continue to individualize uh, to ensure that student safety is paramount, which has been our primary charge, but also show that students will be more comfortable and will embed and integrate themselves into the classroom and this new normal when they feel um, that they've been respected in terms of their unique needs. So again, this is gonna be a continuous conversation, not only um, at the district office level, but with our specific school teams and with you as parents. If you look at some of the pictures below, we look at the, the various needs um, and the unique perspectives of what a, 
a mask may look like. Um, the female in the left corner has a mask with a plastic shield where her mouth is. This is really important for our learners that may be deaf or hard of hearing um, because they are lip readers. And when you have a mask on, that presents a challenge. You've now removed a very necessary accommodation where I can read your lips typically in a, a unique environment in the classroom or at home, but with a mask, I can now, um, I'm having difficulty being able to understand what my requirements are, what you're asking of me. So this unique item is something that we're looking at personalizing for our population of uh, students with needs um, or those that may uh, be hard of hearing. In the middle, you'll see a, a number of different ways that um, students are wearing different types of masks. Um, you see the use of bandanas. Uh, some of the masks are different colors. We know that, that that may be something that's highly requested from some of our students. Again, we talked about cartoon characters. Again, this is a new normal. So we're really gonna have to work with, again, this whole IEP team, which includes our parents, our students, our staff members, our building level leadership and district level leadership to ensure that we are we're rallying around the safety of each individual student um the last measure looks at a homemade mask so for some of our students again if we're we're looking at a leveled um dispersal of masks that we've been able to provide students may be used to something that has been made at home maybe a relative or maybe mom or dad has sewn a mask that the student really uh thrives from we want to be able to again collaborate with you to find what works best for our students so that we can continue to protect them especially when we're in an in-person model so again all of this is continued individualization and that's something that we're committed to do at fargo public schools for our students with special needs again if you have specific questions we want you to reach out to your special ed teachers to your building level principals Ask those questions that you may have, but know that there is going to be some flexibility as we provide safety measures in the upcoming school year. On this slide, again, this is kind of a reminder of some of those building level safety measures that are going to be taking place. And we know this is important because, again, there this, as I continue to say, is a new normal for many of our uh, students across Fargo Public Schools as well as our staff members. So there, throughout the building, there will be foam in and foam out stations, which typically is placing your hand under a sanitizer area and foam will come out. Um, for some schools, they may be updated to where this will be um, something similar to what they've had before, but for many of our classrooms and for the locations, this will be new for our students. So this will go back into teaching and educating our students through our staff members and rallying around so that we can provide this as a routine uh, system and a routine expectation as we're moving into the upcoming school year. These foam in foam out stations are located at many of the, your main entrances uh, as you're coming through some of your specials, lunch rooms, some of those high areas where um, you're not just in your classroom anymore. So we're looking at the gym, recess, lunch, um, any of those large group spaces. Know that um, our maintenance and operations team have been looking at enhanced rotations for enhancing the cleaning procedures across every school. Uh, there are varied levels of cleaning from sanitizing to disinfecting to deep cleans that will continue to um, not be only provided daily, but considered for increased weekly, monthly uh, deep cleans to ensure the safety of all stakeholders, which includes our students, um, our staff members. So we really thank them for all the unique time they've taken to really enhance the cleaning procedures for all of our safety. As we've uh, said previously, we're looking at common signage that's gonna be throughout the school. 
it's going to be reminders about social distancing, the face coverings, etc. So again, students will see it there. But again, in the classroom, we will individualize and really hone in to uh, make it a staple of our necessary routine days as we move forward. Um, and last but not least, each building is equipped with disinfectant sprayer. So you're looking at your custodial teams, your foremen. Um, so everybody has the necessary resources so that they can embark in um, those deep cleans and those routine uh, deep cleans that they're going to continue with as we move into the new school year. Okay, so we continue in talking about our operations and building maintenance teams. We want to let you know that those teams have been trained and guided into the numerous needs of orders and distribution of those cleaning supplies and these new measures so that we can continue to align with our building level principles and district leadership. So again, uh, training has been provided for the ordering of the masks, the shields, the gloves. Each building has had their HVAC systems looked at and we want to ensure that there's increased fresh air input again as we're utilizing masks in our new normal. We want to ensure that um, more and more air is available to all of our students and our staff members as we embark in the new normal. In our buildings, our water fountain bubblers will be shut off. We want you to work with your uh, teachers and your building level principals to talk about what that looks like, especially for those students that require um, frequent amounts of water throughout the day. We're going to have to get creative. Um, but we would leave that to our building level principals to help make those decisions. Our playgrounds are not sanitized or disinfected. Um, this is not an area of oversight, but this is an area that um, because our principals and our building level maintenance teams are going to be working very hard on the interior part, uh, it just poses so much difficulty to um, ensure that we'll have somebody outside to clean these areas as often. The good thing to know is in those areas, there's more opportunity to provide um, outdoor activities, to do things that are individualized or specific to our students as well. So in the event of a positive COVID-19 case in a school, our custodial staff immediately sanitize and disinfect, disinfect the affected areas. Um, not only will this happen, but increased communications will be going out to our families of students with special needs alongside of all family members in those buildings. We know that these are unique and scary times, and we will continue to be transparent. We'll talk about the next steps that will be there. And again, if you have any questions about this, reach out to Dr. Cummings, myself, your building level leaders, or your special education teachers. But know that we're, we're thinking in advance. We hope that we won't see anything like this, but again, we wanna be preventative and be planned to support um, all measures for the safety of our students and our staff members. Last but not least, we're looking at non-essential classroom materials um, and removing them to help in accommodate the social distancing. So our classrooms have been unique. There might be opportunities where students were face to face with another student. Um, there may have been tables that they were sitting at, but to really enhance the social distancing model and ensure their safety, some materials may need to be moved to ensure that they have a desk space that's appropriately lined out to align with that social distancing. The last area to focus on as it aligns to safety is transportation. Not only to look at what the new normal will be for transportation, but also to dive back into the cleaning procedures. Dr. Gandhi has highlighted this area in his overall plan. But again, we want to hone in on this because it is a very specific area to the the transportation and um, delivery to get to our schools and what that means for our children with IEPs. So 
both students and drivers are going to be required to wear face masks when on the bus. We know that there's going to be um, some unique needs for our students, as we said previously. There will not be reprimands um, for students that cannot continue to keep on a mask, but we want to ensure that we, again, are influencing those safety procedures. So again, the, the training and the routines and the social stories will need to continue to be embedded at the school level so that we can, again, enhance the opportunity for our students to align to these new procedures or what this new normal looks like. If you have questions, again, reach out to your case manager, special ed teacher, or building level principal so that we can continue to address the unique needs of your child. Students are, will be offered onboard hand sanitizer. Again, if there's a hand sanitizer or even a soap um, that's specific to your child, you may want to consider sending that in. Um, again, if it makes them more successful, that's what we inevitably want to do. We want this experience um, not only to flow well, but we want them to be invested in the cleaning procedures and staying safe as well as to the best of their ability. Currently, families and staff will complete a home health screener before boarding the bus each day. We're continuously working with our bus company to see what that will look like. Um, however, as we get more information, we'll reach out to our families to discuss this in greater detail. As we've talked about at the school level, we want any individuals that need to stay home due to illness to stay home, just as that. Again, this is a collaborative effort of ensuring the safety of all students, not just one, um, as well as our staff members. So we're asking in advance for your collaboration in that. Something new that we may see on our buses are assigned seats. Um, and we may see more routes being um, implemented as we try to practice social distancing on the bus. So again, our operations team and the special education department is working with our transportation company that provides services to ensure that we can continue to think outside the box to ensure the safety of each and every student in our Fargo Public Schools. Each night our buses will be cleaned uh, through enhanced cleaning methods. Drivers will be responsible for disinfecting handrails, seat tops and entrance doors between runs. Again, trying to think about how we keep every staff member, every student safe as we prepare for the upcoming school year. If there are any questions related to transportation and the provision of providing transportation and keeping your child safe, again, reach out to your special education teacher, reach out to building level principals, or reach out to Dr. Cummings or myself so that we can answer all your unique needs. At the end of this presentation, you may also utilize feedback by uh, taking the time to complete our survey. Again, there are going to, there's going to be a number of open-ended questions where you can provide some of these specific questions that you have for your child or children for the upcoming school year. Let's shift from the safety needs of our students to the instructional needs and look at the instructional levels that Fargo Public Schools will be offering during the COVID risk levels. Again, our preferred method is an in-person or on-site model, but that may not be possible, again, given the safety needs um, within our district and within our area. Other areas that we want to look at are a hybrid learning model, which would be a combination of on-site time as well as distance learning, or distance learning, which is 100% virtual. Additional areas such as virtual academy and guided practice center will also be uh, discussed through Dr. Cummings. And know that with all these levels, there are different varied levels of restrictions as well. Again, the safety and well-being of our staff and students is the priority at Fargo Public Schools. Dr. Cummings will also mention an IEP matrix um, that will help align to making decisions on what areas will be a better fit um, for your students. So we do have some 
additional targeted areas such as the virtual academy guided practice center but does that meet the needs of your child or children with special needs um, so dr cummings will discuss that in greater detail next will be the staffing models and what the new normal or changes that you could possibly see in the upcoming school year we'll also talk about the afforded resources the compliance needs and the needs for communication as we prepare for the school year 2020 to 2021. So again, just brief look at the different instructional levels. This would be an insert in-person on-site model. You might see students um, wearing masks. And as you can see in some of these pictures, they are social distancing. All of our desks are facing in one way and they're very spaced um, out in the classroom. Uh, classroom teachers um, will reduce the amount of materials in the room in order to make space um, for these precautions to take place. There is also, um, as you'll hear later, more safety measures put in place, but we'll get into that in more detail next. The hybrid learning model is a combination of on-site and distance learning. Students will be in school, as you can see the young student learner in his mask writing in his workbook in a school classroom with other students. And then you can see the other young student um, at home with his device still writing in his workbook um, and doing um, education at home. Distance learning and instructional levels really has to do with using 100% virtual where a teacher or therapist is on a computer and working with a student to deliver services 100% that way. Um, there are some students that could probably receive FAPE in this manner, but we understand that there are some students for which this would not be appropriate. One of the instructional levels offered during COVID, um, at what, regardless of risk level, will be a virtual academy. Um, the elementary schools will be offering this utilizing, um, and middle schools will be using teachers of Fargo Public Schools for those students who are credit seeking uh, Fargo Public Schools is linking with North Dakota Center for Distance Education. More information will be coming out regarding um, the, the types of expectations of what, you know, students' learning expectations in order to access the virtual academy. Uh, in talking with North Dakota Center for Distance Education, they are able to offer some accommodations, but they know they are not able to offer all in 100% um, virtual learning situation. More information will be coming out on um, what, what kinds of, of uh, expectations will be placed on the students um, to be successful in this type of setting. I mentioned before about the Guided Practice Center. Uh, the Guided Practice Center is for a targeted population. Um, it is available to students uh, K through five who are participating in the hybrid model. It is, it is for those students for which we believe that the hybrid model would offer some challenges um, and it would allow them to attend on site with an adult supervision. Uh, the adult would not be a certified teacher, but would be somebody who could help facilitate um, the students access to the online curriculum and completing tasks. Uh, Fargo Public Schools does need to reserve the right to develop qualifying criteria uh, based on internet access, engagement level of student and attendance. And again, please know that um, the, minimize, the, the purpose for that is to minimize um, possibility of the risks of COVID by able, so we can social distance in these classrooms. So again, it is to create an environment with smaller numbers that can maintain the safe environment that we need during COVID. You heard me talk a little bit about the matrix in a previous slide. And what that is for is students that we believe require instruction on site, regardless of the risk level. Please, re, re, please know that we understand that safety is of the utmost importance. And so this would not be done without safety considerations. In using the matrix, the, the, the outcome of which is part of that safety is to minimize the number of people who are in the building and in classrooms. And so with intentionality, uh, these numbers need to be kept um, relatively small 
as compared to the entire population of the school district because we have to be able to social distance um, and have the space to do that. So the matrix will be used to help guide this decision-making process. Some of the things that we were looking at are how many in determining is how many goals do the students have? How many related services do they receive? Do they attend in magnet or self-contained programming classes? Students with multiple impairments or students who are, um, have, are on autism spectrum disorders and students with emotional um, disabilities. So all of these things to be taken into consideration. And again, just a starting point to help the discussion. As noted before briefly, staffing will be adjusted during these different instructional levels. There is no way to be able to provide every instructional level uh, and keep the, the same staff that your child may already know. Um, and we understand that this is not a fun concept, but in order to be able to provide the, the, the very varied um, instructional level opportunities, we need to be able to have our staff work uh, in case loads and in um, instructional levels that allow them the opportunity for planning and programming for your child's education as well. And so we are need to, we'll need to create teaching assignments to meet the needs for each of the category levels. Our related service providers, um, many of you may know that our occupational therapists or physical therapists serve many buildings. In order to minimize the number of adults coming in and out of buildings, we may need to look at how to equitably distribute caseloads and have some unique rotations for safety needs. Some of the considerations that may come up with are how do we collaborate? Can we use technology um, and paraprofessional support in order to uh, carry out the goals of the, the related service providers, the students um, through their related service providers? Um, the other thing that we really need to discuss is about support staff. Um, you can expect some variations in this in transitioning uh, for us to meet the needs in each of the areas. It may look different among the different instructional models. And this is an area where if on the survey, again, that last question, any more other comments or, or input that you'd like to give, if you have some particular suggestions for the use of paraprofessional or paraeducators, please do let us know in that section. As you know, Fargo Public Schools has been working with our technology and resources. All students will have a one-to-one -one device to use at home, a Windows laptop for students grades six through 12, Chromebooks laptop for grades three through five, and iPads for our pre-kindergarten to our second graders. Communication applications for families in pre-K through five will be using Seesaw, and in grade six through 12, we'll be um, using EDUCAL, and Google Classroom will be used for all grade levels. Alongside of technology, we also know that curriculum comes in many formats. Um, we could have a digital format for the, for the instruction or printed materials. During um, COVID, you probably received some packet of printed materials. Um, you might have also had uh, some manipulatives um, that were sent to your home for your student to use, your child to use as well. These printed or digital materials will be aligned to the curricular needs, uh, your child's case manager and uh, special education teachers and related service providers will ensure that those materials align for special education needs um, and then the general education teacher and the curriculum for, for the general education with some uh, discussion between special educators and regular educators to help modify and accommodate um, where appropriate. There also may be some individualized materials that are that are needed and deemed appropriate through the case manager and related service providers. Um, so those items will need to be considered as well. Uh, analysis and research of materials. We have continued research that we're doing um, and assessment of materials that can support all instructional models. And this could be um, different online resources that we had not tapped in the past. So just no discussions um, uh, for those types of materials are taking place as well. Many of you know that uh, education for students who have disabilities comes with a level of compliance and that's done through the Individuals with Disabilities and Education Act or IDEA law. Uh, with that, 
we want to have we need to have our annual meetings we have to have other meetings and and again um, going back to what was previously said some of those meetings may need to take place virtually in order for um, these different levels of instructional levels to occur and to accommodate uh, minimize the amount of individuals who are entering and exiting our schools while we have students on site um, all again to maintain um, safe learning for our students and as I stated before with our IEPs, our individual education plans, um, we need to create them and we have stay put IEPs right now that we also need to implement and revise as needed. Please also know that we're discussing um, uh, progress monitoring in these different instructional levels. Uh, we need to get a baseline of data for assessing the impact of distance learning due to COVID-19, um, which all began March 13th, as you know. Um, we also need to create a method for ongoing progress monitoring for academic and related services uh, for the report outs that we do and to maintain um, uh, uh, ongoing evaluation in order to inform any revisions that may be needed to be done to the plans. As always, communication is a very important aspect to education for our students with disabilities there are um, could be a varied level of communications due to the different instructional models uh, we are planning on guidance uh, for those different levels and have some survey questions uh, set aside specifically about this question we understand your your child has a general education at least one general education teacher and one special education teacher um, there may be related service providers. There may be more than one special education teacher. And if you're in middle school or high school, you have more than one general educate, your, your child has more than one general education teacher. We want to be mindful of the amount of communication you're receiving. We understand there's this balance between getting enough communication to know what's go going on, but also um, being inundated with several people calling. So we do have some survey questions that are aligned to this and would really love to hear um, your input about how much communication and what kind of communication. Let's shift into the timeline and next steps of our plan. Our parents were provided the asynchronous webinar via the Fargo Public Schools website. Simultaneously, parents of students with IEPs were provided a link for a survey. The survey will be completed between August 3rd and August 10th, where we'll be gaining input and feedback from our parents to help inform our special education leadership work group throughout the month of August. On this slide, you are provided with a quick snapshot of our survey process and the content for each unique area. There are two different areas. There'll be a link to our families that are returning to Fargo Public Schools and a link to our families that are new to Fargo Public Schools. So this is those students that will be attending Fargo Public Schools in the 2020 to 2021 school year for the first time. If you're a returning family, you will click the designated link and be uh, given the option to complete 16 questions. This will obviously integrate demographics as well as assess the distance learning and staff communications during the end of the 2019 to 2020 school year as Fargo Public Schools embarked on distance learning. As we prepare for the 2020 to 2021 school year, we want to get your input and feedback regarding the instructional resources that you may need, desired staff communication styles and frequency, and any concerns for going hybrid or with a distance learning model in the upcoming school year. If you are a new Fargo Public Schools family, you'll have the option to influence us with some information and feedback on 11 questions. Again, there'll be basic demographics and we're gonna be probing to look at what resources and what um, is the amount of staff communication that you're looking for in the upcoming school year. Should we go to a hybrid? or distance learning environment. Additionally, we want to find out, again, this is for each set of our parents, what are your concerns? What, what questions do you have? So again, this allows for you to be more individualized in your response 
you can definitely add um, the specific or unique disability classification of your child, the needs for supports, your worries, concerns, and also what you need. Because again, we want to be able to highlight from all facets and all models how we can best support and meet the needs of your child. Another next step is convening a special education leadership work group with our area service coordinators. During that meeting, we'll reflect upon the feedback and input of our parents, our building level principals, and staff members as we prepare for the upcoming school year. This time will also be an opportunity for us to build out processes and procedures for the upcoming school year, looking at what supports and resources are needed for our special education teachers and related services team as we explore those different learning modules or modalities for providing instruction in the upcoming school year. We also will want to develop recommendations for achieving all the compliance related um, work that we do in special education. So these include uh, frequency of communications, our IEP meetings, paperwork, etc. Additionally, we'll focus on creating templates as a resource for our, for our teams to use when creating individualized contingency plans, specifically looking at what this looks like for our students at the various instructional models. Lastly, we're going to be creating processes and guidelines for our, our IEP teams to follow given our current recommendations through Fargo Public Schools, but also reflecting on what some of the state and federal guidelines are as well. The final component of timeline and next steps revolves around continuous communication with our stakeholders. We are seeking the input and feedback of these numerous stakeholders to continue to shape and enhance all of our programming and the needs for resources throughout the upcoming school year. This includes our building level leadership, our teachers, related service providers, our community partners, and then most importantly, our students and you as the parent or guardian. If you're interested in participating in a focus group related to special education throughout the year, please contact me at the email listed on this slide. We would love a diverse panel to continue our conversation as we continue to look at the different modalities of instruction and what that may look like in the upcoming school year. Again, if you're interested in, in serving on this diverse panel, please email me at the following email address. On behalf of Dr. Patty Cummings, Director of Special Education and myself, we would like to thank you for your time and attention to this presentation. Please know that this is the start of continued communication and collaboration as we do what's best for our students across Fargo Public Schools.